I got to ask you, when you, you know, follow up with the huge success of the first movie, <laughs> for you, first of all, what was for you the biggest challenge in facing this, uh, this monster? <laughs> I, I think that uh, this is a, a movie answer. So um, it's, uh, for me, the challenge is for doing a, a, for a sequel was, we, we, you know, you, th there's the, always the danger that you sort of, they're very awkward sequels because you've sort of found your character and you've generally, if it's a happy ending, you've given them what they wanted and Paddington had found his home and we really wanted to find a story that was a film that could exist in its own right for a character who doesn't have normal movie flaws. He's incredibly kind and polite and good natured and you know he doesn't have a big issue to get over and, and really the journey for us was about finding a story for Paddington where uh, he could have a proper character arc and, and uh, uh, we started um, thinking about these, th you know, because he, he's a good character, and we started thinking about the Frank Capra movies, especially the 1930s, the Mr. Mm -hmm. Smith Goes Washington, Mr. Deeds Goes Down, and It's a Wonderful Life. And um, uh, and, and they sort of have, uh, you know, often Jimmy Stewart playing a character who has these great values, and you sort of go, well, what's the journey there? And it's a sort of journey of wondering how those values will withstand the big city and cynicism and the real mm -hmm. world. And so once we sort of found that journey for Paddington, we began to feel that we might have a movie that was a film in its own right. Absolutely. And Simon, I assume the same question for you as the writer. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you guys um, have worked together, obviously, a lot and so forth, but still. We, we have, yeah. We like to do things that are, first and foremost, funny and have a heart. And so yeah. we, and we've worked together a lot before. And for me, I think it was finding, you always have those bits where you feel a sort of relief that you're going to get the laughs and you're going to get the comedic engines, like sending them into the community, as Paul said. It, we felt good about writing those community characters, and then prison was a big one because you, you know, we looked at films like Stir Crazy, you know, yeah. where these innocents go to prison, and yeah. there's quite a few examples of these. And we went, we immediately went, this will be great fun. He goes, and how about Paddington complains to the chef about the food? And I think we yes. had that idea really early really on. We early, both yeah. made us laugh and thinking, we've never had a character in a film no. complain, complain about prison food before. You know, what if he goes, it's a bit salty and it's a bit gritty. And I think you could improve it with some, you know, that to us. I know, so because he never, see, what's so lovely about Paddington is he never sees bad in anyone. Yeah. So you can give him the most menacing look and he's just, no, just, just a second. Just come down here. I'm gonna do. Yeah. And, and absolutely oblivious because he doesn't believe anyone in the world has bad yeah. intentions. And, and that felt like a really funny environment to send him. Yeah. And, and Marmalade can solve every problem. Of course. <laughs> it's only in Paddington land. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, one of the things I really loved about this was well, there's so many incredible visuals in this film, and at the the pop-up book. Talk oh. a little bit about that because that was a wonderful thing that oh, carried through the whole so the, the entire movie. It was a, a vast labor of love. I mean, it took a it, it's one shot, and it took well over a year. I mean, it was a it was a monstrous thing to do, and. Um, uh, we started by building a pop-up book. We, we, we really loved the idea of, of that wonder of seeing a place and, and what, Padding, what this pop-up book means to Paddington. And, and emotionally, that's what the sequence was doing, was going, this will show Aunt Lucy London. And it also plants this little seed where he, so there's a really beautiful moment where he hugs Aunt Lucy in his imagination. And even though Paddington never vocalizes it, you realize that what he really misses is his aunt. He wants a hug from another bear who understands what it is to be a bear. You know, he wants to hug his, his mummy, effectively. And, um, and so, so there's this sort of emotional heart to it, but there's also this huge te technical kind of exercise. And, and so we built a pop-up, but we worked with this amazing paper engineer. We made it all real, because we love that low-fi quality. We then had this extraordinary artist who spent six months hand-painting every single thing you see in there. Mm. Nothing's made in the commuter. And then we got it into the commuter, and it's like a dance between the pages of the book and Paddington and Aunt Lucy, and it was just a lot of head scratching over about eight months, and then we were able to start building yeah. it. Well, you created magic. It thank was you very totally much. magical, and oh, I just absolutely you. love that. It's I'm so, so unique. I mean, oh. it's just incredible. You talked about the prison scenes. Talk a little bit about that. That was just so much fun and so hilarious on so many levels. But Brendan Gleeson, oh. uh, talk a little bit about him because he's marvelous. Yeah. He's such a joy and he's such a brilliant, uh, he, he's a brilliant actor and, and we sort of all know that, but he's got such a great sense of humor as well. And, and I think his scenes were some of the hardest to do because they're against Paddington, who's not there, and it's what we started with. And it's really a kind of double act between them. Yeah, sort of a buddy. It's a sort of romance. Yeah, sort of romance kind of thing. Yeah. And you don't know how it's going to 
like and, until panic no matter how much you have stand-ins and you work with ben and you work with and i'm there and then there's actors until the animation starts to exist much later it's really hard to gauge the level of performance and brendan was so pitch perfect he's really funny but there's so much heart and emotion to it and he brought so much of that his reaction to the hard stare the exam was quite late the hard stare and we went he should give knuckles the hard yeah. stare and then, and I think we were in rehearsals, and, and, and Brendan did this sort of, it's just hot in here, it's hot. Very hot, are you hot? And I leave the oven on, and it was just the way he plays. That accent is so factually great. offensive. It's factually um, how he sounds like. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's perfect. It's just perfect. And that thing at the end with the, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell everyone, be sure you stay know, for yeah. the credits oh. because his yeah. number with the group at the end yes. is worth the price of admission. Good. It's just brilliant. That yes. was the first thing he filmed, his first day. His first day, 18 hours of singing and dancing. Yeah. I think he immediately regretted saying yes. He says yeah. no to everything. And then went, oh, what am Matt, I signing goes, up for? No, I know why I say no to everything.